What is going on guys? This is Daniel and last week I made a video on how DeMarcus Cousins is fitting in with the Warriors offense and how he's fitting in well, but what about the defense? This is an area at times he struggled with in the past, so today I'll be diving in to his defense. Let's get to it. Let's start with the positives and one big strength of his is how he uses his IQ and anticipation to get steals and create turnovers. Here for example, Kyrie will drive on the fast break and we'll see how Cousin sniffs out the drive and pounces on Kyrie to get the jump ball. Good anticipation and good use of his hands. He's also not afraid to gamble and deviate from traditional fundamental defense which can be a good thing or a bad thing. Here the result is good as he's able to pick pocket Kyrie in the pick and roll which is something not many big men would even try. He can recognize something happening a split second quicker than other big men. Here for example, he reads the passing lane and is able to get a deflection. And so far this season he's averaging 1.8 steals per 36 minutes, an elite rate for a big man, and also what helps him generate these steals is the fact that he has a 7-6 wingspan. The strong IQ and anticipation he has also helps him in help defense and this has been an encouraging sign with the Warriors. He's not the quickest player but if he can be smarter than many that gives him an edge. On this play for example he contains nicely in the pick and roll and then on the reversal we see his intelligence in action as he takes a charge. And as we know sometimes the best help is no help. Here for instance Rozier gets penetration and Cousins has a decision to make. Does he come over for the block or does he stay back and play for the rebound? And he makes the right choice. He sees that Livingston is not totally beat and is in position to contest and Livingston is also a very long defender. So Cousins does not go for the block knowing Livingston is in position to contest on his own and Cousins gets the board. His intelligence has allowed him to be a not great but adequate rim protector and also his timing to block shots like this. His help instincts have also translated to his pick and roll defense as well. Here for instance he's in a tough spot. He has to worry about the ball handler coming at him while also worrying about Adebayo an athletic rim runner so he's guarding two at once essentially but he does a great job as he reads the lob and gets the steal. So last year his pick and roll defense was largely a liability but this year thanks to increased effort his IQ is shining through and I would say his pick and roll defense has been competent. Next, this may be a bit obvious but the other big advantage he has on defense is his strength. He's quite the strong player and one area where this helps him in is on the defensive glass he's able to keep big men off the boards with relative ease. On this play in the pick and roll we see that Aaron Baines actually has inside position to get the offensive board and Baines is a very strong player but Cousins is able to out battle him and tip the board to green. Strength also makes Cousins an excellent post defender and this was seen when they played the 76ers and Cousins was by far the best defender on MB. Embiid had trouble backing Cousins down on these post ups and that resulted in some tough mid range jumpers such as this one. The thing is post defense is very matchup specific. Some centers don't post up at all so Cousins post defense wouldn't matter in a matchup like that but his post defense when he plays against Embiid suddenly becomes very important as Embiid is used to having his way in the post. And here Cousins forces a very tough post shot and then later on the possession he draws a charge. The Warriors haven't had a brute like this since Zaza though Embiid here does do a nice job of scoring in the post. Now let's move on to the negatives and one that will likely play a factor in the playoffs is his perimeter defense. And this is something that versus 90% of teams isn't an issue, but versus 10% of teams that can attack his perimeter defense it can be a big problem. And versus the Celtics it was a bit of a problem because they have Al Horford who's a pick and pop center who gives lots of traditional slower centers trouble. And we see that here the Celtics run a pick and pop. Boogie tries to drop but that gives up a Horford 3 though he misses. This is tricky because Horford of course has an above average jump shot you need to respect. 
So if Cousins drops, he immediately will need to close out on Horford to take away the jumper, but Cousins isn't the best at closing out. He's quick with his feet at times, but he has trouble changing directions. So on this play, we see he does prevent the jump shot, but that allows Horford to attack the closeout and gain an advantage, though here the Warriors do a great job of rotating and contesting the three. In the second half of this game, what we actually saw more of was switching. So Horford would set the pick and pop, and Cousins, instead of dropping, will switch, so that way Horford wouldn't be open on the pop. The problem, of course, is the potential mismatch, and here, Cousins has to switch on to Kyrie Irving. Kyrie is able to gain some separation from Boogie, who doesn't do a great job of staying with Kyrie, and it results in an Irving 3. On this play, Horford sets the ball screen, and Cousins switches on to Tatum, and Cousins does an admirable job of staying in front of Tatum, but this still is a mismatch, and Tatum is able to score, and what coverage to perform against the Horford pick and pop is a tough choice. So in high stakes matchups, Cousins perimeter D may be a problem, but it should be noted that against ordinary perimeter players, Cousins has done well on switches. Here's just one example where he's switched on to Justice Winslow, and he does a good job of staying in front. Another issue he's been having this year is with fouls, and this shows up rather frequently. And part of it is him adjusting to the new rule changes, they're calling it tighter. And a hold like this against Horford is more likely to be called this year than last. But it's not just the rule changes, he's also undisciplined. And I talked about earlier how deviating from the norm helps him get steals, but that also has a downside. Here, for example, defending Embiid in the post, Embiid is about to take a difficult fadeaway, but Cousins bails him out by reaching in, slapping down, and Embiid draws the foul. His effort is night and day when compared to last year, but he still does have some focus lapses. Here in the pick and roll, we see that he's standing straight up, he's not in a stance, and being flat-footed like this results in an easy hand check call for the official. If we look at his fouls per 36 minutes, we see that they're way up this year through a small sample size. And let's actually take a big picture look at this, let's zoom out, and say, okay, last year he didn't foul much, but that's because he wasn't giving the best effort on defense. This year he is giving better effort and he is fouling, so the question needs to be raised, can he give good defensive effort without being a foul prone player? So far the answer's been no, and we know that good defensive teams don't foul at the rate he's been fouling at. Now the other thing that's hurting Cousins right now is that he's making too many basic mistakes that offset the positive things he does do on defense. And here the example I'll use is that he's not providing necessary help on back screens. So on this play we see Ben Simmons gets a back screen toward the basket, but Cousins is too tight up on his man, he doesn't provide help, and that allows for the easy alley-oop. On this play, Patty Mills gets a back screen, and Cousins, again, he's guarding the screener, so he should be dropping low to provide some sort of help, but instead he's tight on his man, and when Curry gets stuck on the screen, it's a layup for Mills that should have never happened. Overall, I'd say Cousins has played decent defense thus far, and in the playoffs, it will depend on the matchups. If they play the Sixers, Cousins will be vital in terms of defending Embiid. Or even if they play OKC, Cousins is a big body to throw at Adams to try to keep him off the offensive glass. But on the other hand, if the Warriors play the Celtics, Horford will give Cousins trouble, just like Horford gives any other traditional big trouble. And also, if the Warriors play the Rockets, I see Harden as someone who will look to attack Cousins in the pick and roll, and Cousins' competent pick and roll D may not hold up versus Harden and Capella. Well, there you have it guys. Overall, Cousins has been a great addition to the Warriors. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.